Hello, welcome from the Louisville Historical Society to the George Elias Nissen House. The Historic Nissen House is a project of the Louisville Historical Society, which was established in 1991. As part of its mission, the Society has advocacy for preservation of its historic sites. And the George Elias Nissen House is an important part of the Society's mission and of the Louisville and Forsyth County story. The George Elias Nissen House, built circa 1876, has been a spacious home for many prominent Louisville families for over 130 years. It served as home and office for at least two town doctors. It, it was owned by the Sheets family for over 40 years. It has been a venue for several local businesses, including Roselli's Bakery and Garden Shop for many years. There are eight fireplaces, four upstairs and four downstairs, one in each room. The newly restored lower floor includes a catering kitchen and ADA bathrooms. A heritage garden is featured on the grounds. Some of the proposed uses of the restored house include venue for retreats, small weddings, receptions, meetings, family gatherings, classes, gallery exhibitions, performing arts, student field trips, workshops on Victorian arts and crafts, continuing education classes, seminars for adults, and an archival deposit for Louisville history. After restoration, the second floor of the house will become rental office space for nonprofit organizations. We hope the house will work uh, interactively with the community and become one of the gems of Forsyth County. With this adaptive use, we hope to preserve this house and it's part of the story of Louisville and Western Forsyth County for years. George Elias Nissen was born in 1839, the oldest son of John Philip Nissen, who started the Nissen Wagon Works in 1834 in Watown of the Wachovia Tract. After serving the Civil War, George came back and helped in the family business. He also started his own projects. Louisville was situated on the Great Wagon Road near the shallow ford of the Yadkin River, making it a prime location for business at that time. In the 1870s, George was running a grist mill in the, in the Louisville Township, which was the fourth largest employing industry in the county at that time. He also ran a sawmill in downtown Louisville with his brother-in-law, Louis Case Loggenauer, the founder and namesake of Louisville. Loggenauer built a large two-story Greek Revival house in 1860 in the middle of the new town, the same year that he married George Elias's younger sister, Mary Elizabeth Nissen. In the 1870s, the House of Loggenauer and the House of Nissen defined the perimeters of the new town of Louisville, which was named in 1859. The Loggenauer and Nissen Sawmill was located in what is now the town square of Louisville and was in existence at least by 1872. Both the Loggenauer family and the Nissen family had roots in free land of the Wachovia Tract. Loggenauer had worked for John Philip Nissen as a young man and there met George's younger sister, Betty Nissen, who would become his bride. After their father, John Philip, died in 1874, George and his younger brother, William, managed the business under the name of George E. Nissen Wagon Works. He modernized the wagon making process, enabling the business to turn out 10,000 wagons per year. The Nissen wagon made economic growth in the region possible, with farmers and tradesmen coming from the west through Louisville on the Great Wagon Road and over the Shallow Ford and traveling onto Salem and Winston with tobacco, corn, and other products to sell. During that time, all roads led to Louisville as it became a major stopover by weary travelers and merchants on their way to Winston-Salem. Under the management of George Elias, the wagon works expanded to enable Western expansion and the growth of the textile, tobacco, and other industries in the Piedmont of North Carolina, and to explore and, de and develop the American West. 
The Nissen wagon was also used in many foreign countries. George Elias Nissen, a member of an important, innovative, pioneering, and entrepreneurial family who influenced business in the area from the 1700s to the early 1900s, was quiet and unassuming, but he had a genius for getting things done. George Nissen also served as census enumerator for the 1880 census in the Louisville Township, and he was Justice of the Peace for Louisville for a time. As his obituary says in the Winston-Salem Journal of September 20, 1913, within his lifetime, he saw Forsyth County and Winston-Salem unfold like a rose of a thousand leaves. He was a pioneer in the local business world, a great factor in the development of this city. And he had a great influence on the development of the emerging town of Louisville and the area that became the North Carolina Piedmont. When the Louisville Historical Society was campaigning to save the Nissen House from demolition in 2008, we realized early on that the house would need to serve the community in important ways in order to pay for its keep. Since Louisville was short on public space for meetings and social gatherings, and still is, we focused our preservation efforts on creating a rental venue that would be functional, attractive to renters, and communicate a sense of what the Nissen House could have looked like during the time the Nissen family lived in it. In late 2008, the house was gifted to the Historical Society by the previous owners. And in January of 2009, with the help of donors, we hired Blake House Moving Company of Greensboro, North Carolina to move the house to a nearby lot owned by the town of Louisville. Our agreement with the SHPO was that we should restore the exterior of the house to its original appearance and would preserve as many of the original interior features as possible and still have a functional event venue. So far, we have only been able to raise enough funds to complete restoration work on the first floor level of the house, which is now ready for public use. We believe the design of the Nissen House was based on the Dunleaf Mansion in Greensboro, a combination of Greek revival and Italian villa. Restoration work on the exterior of the house included removal of non-original porches and vinyl siding and trim, painting and repair of the original wood siding and trim, removal of two modern exterior doors and replacing them with original windows, and replacement of a metal shed roof at the back of the house and painting of the main standing seam metal roof. We built a new foundation and reconstructed the chimneys using handmade brick from Old Carolina Brick Company in Salisbury, North Carolina. Two exterior projects still need to be completed. Reconstruction of the original front bay windows that were removed some time ago, and the entry overhang across the front of the house. Our contractor during the moving phase was Jeff Zanger of Nehemiah Construction, Louisville, North Carolina, and the main contractor for all exterior restoration work was Alfred Wilson, Incorporated of Salisbury, North Carolina. The consulting architect was David E. Gall of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. As we enter the Nissen house from the back door, you're first greeted by the catering kitchen on the left and the handicapped accessible bathrooms on the right. Originally, the space to the right was apparently a servant's room and the one to the left was a traveler's room. This type of room provided travelers coming off the nearby Great Wagon Road with a place to rest and find shelter at all hours. Entering by the back porch, the original back porch entry niche still stands between the two rooms where we are now. Our contractor for all work on the interior of the house was Russell Wilson of West Bend Construction and the consulting architect 
for this phase of the work was John Palmer of Spencer, North Carolina. As we move into the living areas of the house, through the original double Greek revival back doors, we enter the stair hall. The style of these doors and other original double vertical panel doors in the house is consistent with the Greek revival design of the house. The construction of the walls in the hall is commonly known as shiplap, a board on board technique with tongue and groove joinery. With the permission of the shippo, we removed a large non-original storage closet from the hall to optimize our floor space. We left the pair of non-original French doors leading to the front foyer in place to help reduce heat loss in winter. If you look up to the top of the stairs, you'll see an ingenious system constructed by our contractor to prevent heat and cooling loss to the unoccupied second floor. As in all the other family rooms, the floors in the stair hall are made of pine that may have been milled in the Lavenauer Nissen sawmill. The condition of the floors when we acquired the house is best described as terrible, with numerous holes opening to the crawl space, paint spills, stains, termite damage, etc. With the help of Brad Hartle, a skilled carpenter from Salisbury, North Carolina, and a volunteer from the Historical Society, the holes were patched and stained to match adjoining flooring. We made the decision not to sand the floors, opting only for deep cleaning and varnishing. This work was done by Fred Sally of Eco Environmental Services in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. <clears throat> As we leave the stair hall, the first room on the right is the Downing Straw Room named for the original Victorian color of the room that we discovered by careful scraping and sanding of small sections of the walls. We believe this room was used as a dining room, since the original door on the back wall connected to the servant's room. We closed this doorway to permit bathroom construction and made a recessed niche in the original doorway for display shelves. As in the stair hall, construction of the walls and ceiling is shiplap and the flooring is old pine. We removed a facade of modern brick from the fireplace in this room and, the, and in the other three downstairs room, rooms and we did repairs of the fireboxes and hearths, all with matching handmade brick from Old Carolina brick. All four fireplaces are room for design, a style originating in the 18th century with slanting sides and shallow fireboxes to maximize heat projection and smoke elimination. The new threshold leading into the stair hall is a faithful recreation of the original, which was badly damaged, and has the same unique blue-green color, perhaps a nod to the use of blue-green on the Nissen wagons. As we move out of the dining straw room into the adjoining front room, the Nissen family parlor, we're entering the room that was our biggest surprise and challenge. When our contractor's painters were stripping the many layers of paint from the walls, we discovered the remains of extensive lime and faux wood graining decorations that had been painted originally on the walls and wood trim of the room. There were also the remains of faux marbling on the face of the fireplace mantel. We stopped work on the stripping and consulted with a number of conservators including Heather Fernbach, Laura Phillips, Mitch Wiles, Andy Compton, and representatives from the Mesda. In the end, the need to complete the painting work before we lost our paint contractor and our pressing financial need to get the house ready to open for business made the decision for us. We photo documented the designs, applied a semi-transparent color wash over the walls, painted the wood trim to match the other rooms, and left two of the original decorated areas exposed for visitors to see. We also covered the faux marble on the mantel with a thin board that can be removed when design work is done on it. The interior wall construction in this room and in the other front parlor is board and batten with alternating recessed and projecting pine panels. We're currently working on a grant application to have the arch designs and faux wood grain reproduced on the recessed panels. 
The double front one over one windows in this room are a change made in the early 1900s by an owner who removed the original bay windows in this room and in the other front parlor. We hope to have the bay windows reconstructed when funds permit. As we head into the front entry foyer, we're passing through a wide passageway that used to have a doorway that was identical to the one leading into the other front parlor. The SHPO believes this was at a very, a very early change and recommended that we not reconstruct the original doorway. Note the double Greek revival front doors that match the back entry doors. The emphasis on symmetry in this house is striking an influence of the Greek Revival style. Our only photo of George Elias Nissen is also in this room. It was a photo of him when he was a young man serving in the Confederate Army. Now we're entering the other front parlor, the Renwick Olive Room, which also presented a challenge. After the painters had stripped away some of the paint, we made two discoveries. The original board and batten walls had been constructed entirely of walnut paneling, and at some fairly recent point, an owner of the house had replaced the original walnut battens with new wider pine boards. The fireplace mantel, which had been painted many times, also turned out to be a walnut. The committee felt that stripping all the paint from the walls would take too long, be too costly, and would create a very dark effect in a room. Instead, we chose to strip one complete floor to ceiling section of the original wall panel to the left of the fireplace to show what the original walls had looked like. This niche formerly had a non-original closet in it, which we removed. It's interesting that an elderly Louisville resident whose grandparents had lived in the Nissen house remembered the wall paneling from his visits as a child at the house. Another difficult decision was the finish on the ceiling in the room. As the painters stripped away the many layers of paint from the ceiling, producing a pickling effect, we liked its appearance so much that we decided to leave it unpainted. The color in the room is a lighter version of the Victorian Renwick Olive, the first color painted over the walnut paneling. The last room we'll visit is the Cabbage Rose Room, a sitting room adjoining the Renwick Olive Room. Careful sanding and scraping of the paint in the room revealed a startling original paint color. It wasn't until the painters had stripped away all the paint that we realized that apparently before the room was painted pink, it had originally been wallpapered. The reason we believe that is because when all paint was removed from the walls, a ghost pattern of the original wallpaper was revealed imprinted on the bare wood of the walls. It was the same pattern as we had found on a small sample of the original wallpaper border around one of the doors. We photo documented the ghost pattern on the walls, saved the section of the wallpaper border, and decided to paint the room cabbage rose pink the closest Victorian color to the original paint color in the room. We added a ceiling border of Victorian design wallpaper in remembrance of the original wallpaper. When our contractor removed all the non-original interior wall coverings in this room, an early non-original doorway was revealed. As in the Downing Straw Room, we framed the doorway and created a recessed area for display shelves. Another non-original doorway beside the display shelves gives access to the adjoining storage room that we made by separating off a part of the original traveler's room from the area that would become the catering kitchen. We're going to finish our tour in the same room where we began in the, the, uh, the stair hall. In the late fall of 2019, work on the interior of the Nissen House was finally completed, and we obtained our certificate of occupancy. The long struggle to save and repurpose the house was finally over, 
thanks to a number of generous donations from a descendant of George Elias Nissen, and from the town of Louisville, from grants, and from many loyal community donors. We hope the house will fulfill its mission to be an educational, cultural, social, and historic resource serving Louisville, the Piedmont Triad, and beyond.